Okay, so we have a presentation here that you see quite a bit in younger horses that can often be mistaken for trauma or other conditions, but it's almost always dental related. Until proven otherwise, it's always dental related. It can be trauma or other things, but that's actually very rare compared to dental um, issues. Is what, what I'm talking about is, is a swelling on the maxilla here. We'll show you in just a second. Um, but it's a swelling in the, in the front part of the, the jaw. And so this horse here had a broken baby tooth. It's a two-year-old that had a broken baby tooth, the number um, 207 or, or what would be um, the, the cap on the permanent 207. And because the tooth broke, it had to be extracted. Um, and sometimes what, what can happen with that, if a horse loses a baby tooth prematurely or it has to be extracted prematurely, or if somebody's routinely pulling caps prematurely, is it exposes the permanent tooth underneath that's not quite fully developed um, to the bacteria and feed in the mouth, and that can work its way to the apex of the tooth. So in this case, if we look right here, we can see this horse has significant swelling on what's called the maxilla. So this is that swelling that I was talking about. Anytime there's swelling in this area, until proven otherwise, it's always, always from a tooth. Uh, and so here now we'll, we'll show you guys some x-rays that we took. So here, first I'm gonna show you a normal, normal side. So these are normal young teeth. So we can see we have the eruption cyst. This is a part of the tooth that's just developing and soft, but if we look, we can see it's very smooth margins and very uniform. Now if I go to, so that's the normal side. If I go to the other side, you can see here we have a lot of bone sclerosis, so the bone is thickened uh, because it's trying to wall off this abscess, and then we can see how everything is very irregular here. We have a wave starting to develop, uh, where this tooth is erupting into that space and we have these teeth that are shifting into this space. So we have multiple issues going on but all of it is coming from a periapical abscess of this region. So now we'll show you guys an endoscopic view of what it looks like orally. Okay so here we're looking orally. We can see where the cap is missing and I'm putting a little file in here and boom that goes all the way through. That's very abnormal. We have an instant diagnosis of patent infundibulum leading to severe periapical abscess. So it's black and white case where this tooth needs to now come out because there's no coming back from this. Um, and so the best thing to do is, is remove the tooth. Okay, so we took the tooth out and uh, we can see the, you know, there's no doubt in the diagnosis here where we can see this, this is the infundibulum and then this is where that file is coming out right here. You can see there's actually a big piece of feed right here going through the infundibulum. So there's, there's just hay and, and debris and bacteria going all the way to the apex. Um, so these type of extractions, you have to, yeah, look at that piece of food coming up right here. So you have to be really careful with these types of extractions on young horses. Um, there's several big considerations. Number one is you can't really use spreaders because if we do, we're gonna damage the deciduous tooth on the number six and the number eight. So it's very important to have good surgical technique and that these procedures are done with people that have lots of experience and lots of training uh, because it's not that easy to remove a tooth without using spreaders. The other thing is we have to man manage the occlusal surface forces after this tooth is removed on the adjacent teeth because they're fragile. So it may seem like, oh, we have, you know, A equals whatever, and then B equals whatever, and C is we have to take the tooth out, we take the tooth out, and then we turn our back on the horse. No, like we have to look at the whole horse, how we're gonna surgically remove the tooth, how we're gonna preserve the rest of the mouth, and then long-term, how do we manage this mouth? These are all very, very important points that, that we need to focus on when we're doing these extractions. So, um, so this, this guy should do really well. If you're interested in learning more about these types of procedures, this type of dentistry, uh, if you're a veterinarian, we encourage you to contact us. We have a lot of short courses and continuing education that we do that's very unique. It's all hands-on, it's all clinically based, uh, and it's with clinicians that have tremendous amounts of, of experience. And so 
Um, typically, the, we've gotten excellent feedback on, on these classes, so if you're interested, uh, look at the link below. Thanks.